Information is created on Facebook, created by you. Information is stored. In general, how information is stored is in a database. Now, Facebook uses something, I think they call it the info store, or the data store, I can't remember. Everybody's got a different name for these things. Um, but it functions pretty much like a database. And the easiest way to understand a database, I'll talk in more detail about databases later in the course, but the easiest way to think about a database is it's like, a lot like Microsoft Excel, or even just a table that you might type into Microsoft Word. So in Excel, and I'm, I'm hoping that you've all used Excel, if you haven't, now would be a good time to open up Excel and look around. In Excel, or any spreadsheet program, you have tables. Those tables have names, tables have columns, and the tables have rows, right? Hopefully you're familiar with that. Hopefully you've done this one or more times. You open up a spreadsheet program, you type in a name for your table, you type in names for all the columns, and then you type in data in all the rows, right? So let's now go back to my definition of information, um, information itself and talk about it in terms of the database. If a database is a place to store information, it better store all those things that I talked about before, types, items, attributes, values. It better store all those things. If you look at this diagram, you'll see a place for all of those different concepts that I described earlier, starting with the information type. Notice that this table, which by the way, I didn't take from Excel. I probably should have just to make it simple on you. I took this from a database program called Access, which you very likely also have on your hard drive, which you can play around with as well. But notice the table has a name. The name is called people. It's the people table. The name of the table is the information type. That makes sense because I'm going to store all the items of information type people all in the same place, all in the same table. So I have a table. The table is named people, and that's the information type. Now look at all the column names. All those column names are attributes. I have a set of attributes for each person, and those attributes are all in the columns. So for each person in my people table, is that what I call the people? Yep, in the people table, I have attributes. The attributes are the column names. Now look at those rows. Those rows are sets of values. So I have a value under name, a value under address, a value under sex, a value under this, a value under that, et cetera, et cetera. All the values, all the actual things that got typed. If this is Facebook, who typed all that stuff? Remember? You typed it, right? And Facebook stored it here in their database in this simple view of the database. Know that Facebook's database is way more complicated than this. But you typed it in, Facebook stored it in its database, and, the, and it stored all the values that you typed in to all the attributes. Now look at a row as a whole. Scan your eyes across one of the rows on this spreadsheet here, in this table here, and you'll see an item. That's one item of information. How many rows would this have if it was the real database inside of Facebook? 700 million. There would be 700 million rows of information all typed in by whoever created that user in the first place. Okay, so we have information type, that's the name of the table. The attributes, those are the column headings. The values that are in the cells that somebody typed in, and in the case of Facebook, you type them in. And then the rows of the table, the rows of the spreadsheet that are the information items.